Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. As many of you know, I am a woman in long-term recovery. I'm a CARC, I'm a SERPA, I'm a rape crisis counselor, and I'm an Narcan trainer. I have done a video where I describe all of what all that is and how I became what I am today. <laughs> so if you just look in my description box, you will find the link to that video. So if you also look in my description box, you will find the link to all my social media, to my Amazon wish list, which is super, super important to me. Um, I am running very, very low on supplies. Thank you for the people who have participated and got me size six diapers because I was completely out. So if you guys feel inclined, please look at my Amazon wish list and donate whatever you possibly can. Uh, everything is greatly appreciated. Also down there, you will find the links to some other things that I've been involved with. You'll find the link to Smacked, which is a documentary that I did while I was still incarcerated and about mm, seven to eight days into my recovery from methamphetamines. Um, sorry, I have my good old laptop on my lap. Um, Today, I'm going to be doing the Q&A about my meth addiction. Sorry, I'm having hair issues as always, right? Whatever. It is what it is. Um, I'm going to be doing the Q&A of the questions that you guys asked me on my meth addiction. You guys asked some, some doozies. So bear with me. I actually copied it onto my laptop. So this way it's super big and I don't have to give you guys glare off my glasses. Moving on up. Big things. Um, I still have the drama pig in the background. Next week, I will feature another lovely lol planty that I have for you guys. So let's get into this one because I think it's going to be long. Lily Shama, she said, um, can I make a video of what happens in prison on the first day? So I've already did like an intake day. That's technically like your first day into prison, but I can do one, you know, with what the first full day, we'll call it. So I'll, I'll definitely do that this week for you guys. Um, is there anything that you regret that happened during those times? Now remember, this is all about my methamphetamine addiction. And Lena is, um, Lena's looking like she wants to jump up here. And unfortunately, there's no room for her. Um, is there anything that I regret? The list is insane about what I regret during that time. I think my biggest regret is forgetting that I'm a mother first. Um, so Emily May 26 said, did I celebrate my birthday when we were addicted? Yes, actually we did, but not in the same sense. Um, there was no birthday cake and happy birthdays and stuff. I mean, Jared gave me a card and said happy birthday. And Bella, I think actually did give me something for my birthday. Can you please stop rubbing on the table, ma'am? Um, and it was more of an excuse to allow myself to do more of my supply. I mean, any excuse when you're getting high, right? Let's see, moving on. Alexis Quinn 11 said, have I ever OD'd? You know, crazy story, I have not. Um, I'm very, very fortunate that I have not. I just, my God was with me. I, I don't have any other explanation or reason or whatever. I, my God was with me. Um, Swarner, who I'm a huge fan of, girl, I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, do you remember your first time doing meth? Was it instantly addictive, scary? So I do remember my first time doing meth because it was so fucking scary because it was given to me and told it was cocaine and we determined that was a lie. Um, I thought I was going to die. I had the bright idea of taking some Benadryl because I thought it was just bad cocaine and that it was going to make it better, which uh, it did not. I thought I was going to die. I was home alone with Bella. At this time, Jared and I had been broken up, but I don't think we were ever really broken up. Um, and I ended up taking a cab because I was like four o'clock in the morning because I thought I was going to die. So, fun story there. So, Hannah, or I guess it's supposed to be Hannah. Hannah85 wants to know my biggest lesson takeaway. Girl, 
so many. Like, don't fucking do math. <laughs> Definitely don't do math. Math is not your friend. My biggest lesson takeaway, I am so much stronger than I thought I was. I am capable of so much more than I thought I was. Um, there's nothing I cannot do if I do not put my mind to, if I put my mind to it rather. Um, there are so many because that was such a tumultuous year in my life that led up to this beautiful, mind-blowing change that I never thought was possible and that I never thought that I was going to be capable of because look where I am today. You know, and all of that stems off of that fucking disaster garbage can year of meth that Jared and I went through. But we literally are where we are and who we are today because of it. So, you know, I don't recommend it. Don't don't go through hell to get to the other side. But sadly, it seems like that that's what we have to do. So, yeah. Great question, girl. So, this cute little icon says, Zeron... I don't know how to say this, and Jared's not home to tell me. It's Z-I-R-O-N-E-K-M-T. Zeron, I, I don't know, but I like your little icon. That's super cute. Um, did you use meth to enhance your sexual, sexual experiences? Jared and I were in such a bad place in our relationship that sex was such like an afterthought, and when we did, it didn't... Okay, so fun fucked up story. I must have been tweaking really, really hard while we were having sex one day. And I looked down and I did not know who he was. And I freaked out. And I like literally hopped off of him and I was like, who are you? And he was like, what are you talking about? We must have gotten some bath salts mixed in with our meth. And it was just a really, really bad experience. So Shani Bells wants to know, did you have sores on your face? No. And do you want to know why? because of my husband. My husband would not allow me to pick at my face. Matter of fact, he would make me, if he saw I was getting into like that picky type of part of my tweak, because I love to pick, I don't know why, he would take his shirt off and be like, babe, pick my back. And I remember one day he was like, babe, he was like, it looks like I got shot with buckshot. Like, cause it was so many all over his back. And thank God his back is not scarred, but he would not allow me to pick myself ever. He was like, you are way too pretty for that. That is not happening. And I'm really grateful to him for that. So Farrah Clayton 7 wants to know, were you a fighter? I get the impression that you would kick a chick's ass. <laughs> LOL. Love you, by the way. So I've always been scrappy and sassy, and that has not changed. I just think now before I act. Um, back then, there was not a lot of thinking involved. Um, I... I was like a fucking loose cannon. I would fight anyone, Jared included. Like if he didn't say something that I liked, I would chuck a soda bottle, like right, a soda can right at his head. He actually has a picture. Um, if I can get him to send it to me, I will post it. That, and this is, I'm not glorifying this at any way possible because this is a really shitty way to live your life. But I was a scrappy ass bitch. Like I did not care if I was 92 pounds, 82 pounds, 72 pounds, or 192 pounds, which I've never been. But I did not care. Like, I had zero fucks. And I, anyone who looked at me the wrong way, I was like, what? What? So, yeah, I was, I was kind of a little scrappy. So, Stacey Craig wants to know, what thing did you tend to do while you were tweaking? Really meticulous things. Like, I used to have this box with these, like, compartments in it. And I was very specific on what kind of bags I would use to bag up my product. And I would go through and make sure they were all open. And then put them back in a specific way. Um, I would clean certain things like our smoking utensils very, very efficiently. Jared once cleaned a pipe for three and a half hours. That thing was spotless. Um, let's see. So the got and the re -wister. sorry if I'm butchering you guys' you know, names, what do you wish loved ones had known that would have been helpful? Tough love does not work for me. You can lose your cool and express your feelings all day, every day. You have absolutely every right to do that. But that tough love, like, 
get out of my face, get out of my house, I'm going to cut you off. Okay, do it. That That's not the, that shit doesn't work for anybody. It really doesn't. Um, Ming Leonard wants to know, what did you do for food? Did you get hungry? So, yeah. Okay, so meth is not the type of drug where, like, you're like, oh, I don't want to eat. You just, there's so many extra hours in the day, and your mind is, vroom, 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 vroom. like, you don't even realize. Like, I would tell someone, yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes, and seven hours later, I would show up to deliver a product. And it was, like, par for the course. We all know it. Like, it's just meth time is different time because you don't sleep, so you have so many other hours in the day, you know? Um, let's see. Kirtan Janice 79, oh, 079, sorry. How often do you take it to withdraw, avoid withdrawal? Um, it really depends on how deep you are into your addiction. So some of us have to dose like every hour, some every two days. It really depends. Jared and I were so deep into it and doing so much that if he, it, when we finally did go to sleep, we would get we started getting into a regular pattern towards the end where we would go to sleep six seven eight o'clock in the morning and wake up at noon like that became our our schedule and i would lean i would come into we have like a little area outside of the bathroom where we had like a coffee pot and stuff and i would come over pee get everything ready add a bag of meth into the coffee pot and make coffee and come back and wake him up and i would already have a bowl waiting to go in the bong to wake up to because that you know four or five hours was time enough where I needed to smoke and I'm pretty sure he was on the same schedule um same person wants to know how did it make you feel physically and mentally so physically I don't physically I don't really feel like it makes you feel a certain way if you will it's so hard to explain. It's so hard to explain. You feel more awake, more alive, more concentrated, more on point, more specific, if that makes sense. Um, Dig Dirt Q wants to know, any good books or movies about addiction you can recommend? Oh, so I have a list. Um, so if you want to know about meth addiction and things like that, The Beautiful Boy on Amazon is Amazon Prime is such a wonderful movie to watch about meth addiction and it's about the father and son nick chef and david chef they also wrote tweak and the beautiful boy that is also um books that are just wonderful for alcoholism a million little pieces i always revert back to it because even though some of it is fictional it is just it's a really easy read and it's a really great read I just started reading a book that Lucia recommended to me by this guy Jordan Barnes and it is he's actually going to be on the channel in a couple of weeks. So it is absolutely wonderful. I absolutely recommend it to whoever, everyone. Um, and it is his story of... Um, I'm looking it up right now because I want to make sure I say the proper... Okay, so it's called One Hit Away by Jordan Barnes, and you can get it on Amazon. It's his story of heroin addiction and being homeless and, you know, his family, his faith, and then his recovery. And it's absolutely, it's amazing. I absolutely, I listened, I listened to the audio book of it, and I listened probably like 23 chapters the first day. I couldn't stop listening. Like, and I messaged him and I was like, please tell your mom I love her. Like, she's such a wonderful mother. It just was fantastic. So yeah, that those are some books that I highly, highly recommend and movies that I highly recommend. So thanks for asking that. That's really a great question. I appreciate that. Mary Elizabeth 17, um, I answered her. She asked questions about my daughter. And right now that is not something I could discuss. So thank you but not right now. Um, let me see. Whitney De Deering wants to know how much or how often did you use each day? Too much. I mean, I probably put an eight ball in the pipe at a time, unfortunately. Um, so same girl wants to know, besides the day you got arrested, what was your worst day on meth? 
all of them. I mean, honestly, all of them. They all just bled into another and they were just full of the devil. Jared and I hated each other but loved each other. Bella was sorely ignored. Everybody around us was only there for the drugs. Like, all of them. All of them. Beautiful Disaster 95 wants to know, and I was shocked by the meth... Oh. Oh, procession. Sorry, guys. And I know heroin was a struggle for him. I had no clue, both of you. I don't know. Hold on. Maybe this is... Oh, sorry. This is a two-part question. So it said, did you ever use meth and heroin at the same time? I know someone who was recently caught with both, and I was shocked by the meth procession. I know heroin was a struggle for him. Had no clue of both. So I have not used heroin. It, this November, God willingly, will be 12 years. So I never used both at the same time, but it's it's a dance with the devil for sure, girl. Like, it's it's... It's bad. Um, I think I skipped one. Hold on. Nope, I did not. So, do I still have track marks? I did not shoot methamphetamines. I only smoked and did hot rails. I did not like to sniff it. Um, so, I have, like I just said, we'll have 12 years clean this year. I do not have a track mark in sight. I am super blessed and grateful for that. Uh, I just... I, I got really lucky. I mean, I have a little bit of a dark mark, but that's it. I'm really lucky. Really, really lucky. So, Curtin Janice uh, wants to know, were you addicted after the first use? I don't per se think I was addicted after the first use because the first use was a mistake. I did not know. But I became determined to try it again to prove that I could do it, which is so strange, right? Um, Kurt and Janice 079 wants to know, is meth ice? It's apparently very cheap in Australia. Oh, well, great. Um, yes, it is. Meth, ice, crystal, glass, shake, smoke. I mean, it has so many different names, but yes, it is all the same. Uh, I want to give Rachel Michelle a shout out. She said she loves my videos and she can't wait to see more content from me. March 28th is her three years clean. So get it, baby. You are coming right up on it. Congratulations. I am super proud of you. That's amazing. It is. And then Rachel Michelle also wants to know, um, crazy. She wants me to do some crazy story times or some of my lowest moments besides obviously jail and losing my baby girl. I can see that. Um... Curtin Janice 79 wants to know, how did you rent a property while in addiction? So that's actually a very good question and not many people ask that. We didn't. We lived at Jared's parents' house who were living in North Carolina at the time. Um, we probably could have, <clears throat> excuse me, no problems because we were making tons of money, but we were in such a warped like a, I, it was just a crazy time. Uh, Maisie Kennedy wants to know what was my daily routine like? Ugh, it was so crappy. We'd wake up at noon and get high immediately. And then the whole day would revert around making sure somebody was here to get Bella off the bus so we can run interstate because that's what we would do. We would go into PA and we would go pick up. And the people that we were dealing with in PA were just... I mean, they were decent to us, but I've heard really bad stories. Um, and it would just revert around picking up, bagging up, getting things out to people, getting more money, going back. You know, it was literally consuming. That's all we did was use drugs, sell drugs, use drugs, sell drugs, use drugs, sell drugs. It was exhausting. Um, element, blah, blah, blah. Emily Zorzanello wants to know, did you ever have a problem with Adderall? What's the difference between ads and meth? So I personally have never had a problem with Adderall. It was never prescribed to me, even though I probably could have used it in my younger years because I definitely have ADD and ADHD. But um, there's Adderall is considered like poor man coke. And the difference between meth and Adderall, in my opinion, is not a lot. So, but, you know, that's not a medical, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just me. I'm just an addict in recovery who is trying to do her thing for other addicts to get them into recovery. Um, 
Bella Santos Francesca. I hope I got that right. What was the biggest regret during those days? <laughs> life. All of it. Knowing I wasn't living my life the way I should be. Knowing I wasn't being the mother that Bella deserved and that I was capable of. Knowing that my relationship was not what it should have been. Knowing I was not the woman that I was absolutely capable of being. I mean, <laughs> what was it, you know? Um, did you ever get paranoid? Hmm. Kinder, kinder Gore asks, did I ever get paranoid? Uh, did I ever not be paranoid is more like the question. Same person. How did you balance being a dealer, addict, and a parent? Not very well. Addict took first police priority and then dealer so I could be an addict. And then parent fell in the last. And yeah. Um, same person. What memory sticks out the most? Ugh. I try not to think about it anymore. <sighs> There's so many that stick out so much. I mean, they're all bad. I don't, I don't, I can't say it was exceptionally good. <laughs> Maybe exceptionally good sales. <laughs> but I mean, it all sucked. It was bad. I was, I was killing myself. I was a walking dead person. So none of it, like, there's nothing that sticks out in a positive note. It was all shit. Um, the longest I've ever stayed up, probably like 13, 14 days. It was bad. Like, I didn't remember if I had showered, when the last time I ate was. Like, I remember saying to Jared, like, when, do you remember when I showered? And he was like, no. He's like, I don't remember when I showered. And I was like, have we slept? Like, what's happening? I know I change clothes 9,000 times a day, but like, what's really good? And he was like, all right, let's go take a shower and go to sleep. Like, it was bad. Bad, bad. I think that's it, guys. Here we are in another like 25 minute video. So yeah, I mean, what's the best memory? I survived. That's, that's the best one. I mean, I don't know. It was such a tumultuous part of my life. I'm super grateful that I made it out and made it out with all of my faculties because these drugs don't love you and they are winning our fight, you know? And I feel like Q and A's like this are super important because I don't want people to think that when I tell story times and things like that, like I'm glorifying my days as a dealer and a user. There, now that I'm alive and I can breathe and I'm happy and safe and on my path of who I should be, I can go back and I can tell a funny story time and whatnot. But it was never funny. It was always, at any point in time, my life could have been just taken from me. You know, and that's that's not a fun time for anybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you have a beautiful weekend. And remember, we recover loudly so those behind us do not suffer in silence. Bye, guys.